<laughs> Smoothie of choice. Uh, actually, I'm really big on juice, like the green juice. Yeah, I do that a lot. More fun, booting a, a 65-year-old punt or, I don't know, smoking one out of the end zone on a kickoff? I would say punt. Yeah, because you flip the field, you know, for your defensive guys. I know you're not, you don't get nervous, you're a professional, but w- between the two, where do, you, where do you get more juiced up to do? I'll tell you what, like, uh, last game I was pretty juiced up for the kickoff, especially when home crowd and stuff like that. I can only imagine what that's going to be like. Do you like the college thing when they, where they flip, you know, they get the keys out and you hear all the, do you, do you hear that? You do, but sometimes it's just white noise at that point. But, yeah, you do hear it. Yeah. So I talked to a couple people this week who think that if the Bears' offense gets going, why not the, why not the Bears taking the whole thing? What do you think? Taking what whole thing? The Super Bowl. Winning the whole damn shalada. Let's do it, right? Why not? Why not? That's why we play this game. Well, if the Bears are going to win that Super Bowl, they're going to need the quarterback now to get healthy. Mitchell Trubisky injured, of course, with a separated shoulder in the Bears' win over the Vikings that got him to 3-1. and one. I caught up with Bradley Sowell. Bradley was an offensive lineman. The Bears moved him over to tight end. He had to lose 40 pounds to do it, and somehow, some way, he got it done. So a couple of questions with Bradley. Number one, about that quarterback and what it's like playing with Trubisky and his personality. And also, at the end of this little brief interview, I asked him what kind of food he misses eating, and Bradley has an excellent choice. Bradley's also been cut, brought back, and now cut again. I expect him to be brought back to the team sometime later this week. But here's a guy who's just living on the end of an NFL roster. He's in, he's out, he's in, he's losing 40 pounds. Not easy. But let's start with that quarterback at Mitchell Trubisky and Trubisky's focus always on the game. All, all football all the time, which, which is how you want your quarterback to be. And um, he's a little hard on himself, just like you know a good player would be. But um, you also got to respect when something's broke with him. He's always out there trying to fix it. And um, you know he definitely gives his all. And I respect the heck out of that. There was a video clip going around where Matt's in his face saying man the F up and and he say how much he loves it when when you when when Bradley's sitting at home watching that what's the reaction um I mean it's if you know Matt and know how how he is he he was probably saying it in like a pump up way to be honest with you um he's yeah he's he's not that kind of coach to be disrespectful to a player at all he is he's the ultimate competitor and um you know he's there's been multiple times where he gets fired up in the hoe and I forget I love it I know a lot of guys love it and um He's very passionate. He's just one of those guys where you look at him, it's like this guy's going to find a way to win no matter what. Like if he has to change everything, he'll do I mean he'll do whatever it takes to win. That's why I love him. I talked to uh, Owen Daniels this week who had you know great success in the league as a tight end. I asked him, Who do you like in the NFC? And he starts thinking for a little bit. He's like, you know what? Bears get that offense going. I actually like Chicago. That's a that's a tight end spot giving some love here what do you think yeah i mean it, it's it's true i mean talent there's no secret this room this team is stacked with talent you know if our offense kind of gets going a little bit which we're, we're training in the right direction you see what our defense can do i mean there, there's no reason we shouldn't be in or win every single game we play in so um, from a talent standpoint it's there it's just all about us going out there and putting it all together on the field and for you personally last one here uh how are you looking at contributing the rest of the way here? Um, you know, just just doing exactly what they asked me to do. Um, I know that they, you know, they have a plan for me, and it's a, a process trying to get to where where they want me to be. I mean, I just started this in May. You know, I was 300, 315 pounds in May. So, um, you know, it's slow increments of getting better, and I've been showing, you know, a lot of stuff I can do in practice, and I think they're satisfied with it. But at the same time, they don't want to just throw me in there and that, you know, have a disappointment early. So it's they're kind of easing me into it and just listen to what they say, and then um, hopefully I can contribute down the road. What are you at right now? Um, about 275 now. So, yeah, that's that's a lot of weight to lose since May and then try to keep my strength up, plus learning a whole new play. I mean, it's a lot, a lot to do, but I think they like where I'm going, and I'm just going to trust them with the plan. I mean, I've been playing eight years, so – it's got it's whatever at this point. I mean, I want to want to want to do best I can, and I just gotta listen to them. Biggest food you miss? Pizza, dude. We're in Chicago. Like, I mean, I haven't had pizza in forever, and I, I could just crush one right now, to be honest with you. <laughs> Would you go deep dish? Is that a thin? What are we talking? Deep dish Pequods. I mean, it's it's my favorite by far here. Deep dish Pequod. I mean, it's like my spot. I love it. What's on that thing? I uh, just do meatball. The meat deep dish meatball from Pequods down in Morton Grove. It's it's the bomb. 
Last stop in the Bears locker room. We slide over from the tight end spot to the center position. James Daniels out of Iowa was a center in college, then a guard last year, now moved back to center. And this is a guy that perhaps could make a Pro Bowl down the line. Caught up with him about that position switch. And a guy named Mitch. Biggest thing for you uh, making the position switch this year, how's it, how's it been? Oh, it's going good. Everyone's been helping me, so I would say it's going good. You feel more comfortable this year at this time versus last year or the same? What would you say? I was, I mean, I'd say about the same, yeah. I, yeah, I would say about the same, yeah. I mean, I remember when you came out and everyone's like, this guy is a center. Uh, that's what he does. But you can also play anywhere on the offensive line. You're super talented. Like, How did you consider yourself coming in the league? Uh, I was just trying to do whatever to help the team win. So if it didn't matter what position, that's all I was trying to do. Could you ever see, like if they said, hey, we want to move you again, would that bother you? No, it wouldn't. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to do whatever. If they think it's better for for that, if that's if that's what's best for the team, then I'll do it. So it really doesn't matter. Team guy through and through. Yeah. Mitchell in the huddle this year to last year. Uh, I can't remember. I, I, I don't know. I mean, in the huddle, I mean, he's good. He's getting the play call in, trying to get us in the huddle, like hurrying us up and things like that. We're doing like our no huddle stuff. So I say, I'd say, yeah, he's doing a good job. I can't remember. I'm, yeah, he's probably doing better than he was doing last year, but I feel like he is doing He's doing really good getting the call in and making sure everyone's where they need to be. Does he ever get on you? Yeah, he always, yeah. What will he get on you for? Just like if the hull's not set or things like that, just making sure that when he gets up, when he's like waiting for the play call that the huddle is set so he can walk in and, get, and say the play. So he doesn't have to wait to say the play once he once he gets into the huddle. What, what do you think needs to happen for the offense to go n- to the next level? We just need to just keep on improving, just focus on little details in every every game. I mean, every day in practice, just focus on the little details, and when the game comes, just focus on the little details so we can get better and better and just improve every week. I'm thinking that guy Tariq could be a big part of next leveling this thing. What do you think? Yeah, Tariq is good. I mean, he's he's really good and really good playmaker, can do a lot of things, so it's just good that... It's just good that we have playmakers all around that can that can do good. Good thing your locker's not right behind his. Oh, yeah, because there'd be a lot of media people over here, so it's good. Last stop today, we're picking it up with Owen Daniels, who won a Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos. The last pass that Peyton Manning ever completed in the NFL was to Owen Daniels. Naperville, Illinois product, and uh, also a long time with the Houston Texans, but one comment, by the way, on Bradley Soul and his choice of Pequod's for his pizza. Pequod's is excellent, but the number one pizza in Chicago is, I'm going Bacino's. You got to go underdog, right? I can't go Lou Mal's. I can't go Gino's East. I got to go I gotta go off the radar. I'm going with the Bacino stuff, spinach and mushroom. All right, let me bring in my guy, Owen Daniels. He's working with Jack Daniels and keeping you hydrated at the same time. And Owen had a child who got diagnosed with cancer at two years old. So I asked him about that, and he was very open talking about it. Talked a ton of football as well. And by the way, he's not related to James Daniels of the Chicago Bears. Here is O.D. It's the O.D., Owen Daniels, with us here. Ten years in the NFL, two-time Pro Bowler, and of course a Super Bowl 50 champ with the Denver Broncos. Uh, he also loves weather. We'll get to that uh, in a minute. Od, I actually wanted—I <laughs> I wanted to start with your son. I, you know, you guys have—you and your wife have uh, posted about uh, Henry and his his battle with cancer, and it seems like he's doing great. Uh, how, how's everything at home? He's doing awesome, man. He's got a clean bill of health. He's uh, had scans every three months, MRI scans that he does every three months. And so he's, he's just over a year um, out of his surgery to have his uh, tumor removed, and he's had a clean bill of health the whole time. Um, and it was obviously a, a, a tough um, year that he had had gone through as far as he got diagnosed with neuroblastoma when he was two years old and I had to go through four rounds of chemotherapy. He had a, a tumor that was um, cancerous and inoperable at the time and um, 
They went through his four rounds of chemo, lost his hair. He's a he's a brave little boy, and um, he is doing fantastic now. It's like it's like nothing ever happened. He's a tough kid, man. He's uh, kids are super resilient. And, um, we've learned a lot about uh, the pediatric cancer world along the way, and they're trying to bring some uh, awareness to that. And, um, uh, as we go through this life now. So um, a lot of kids out there need help and um, <clears throat> not so much. There should be more funding for pediatric cancer than there is. I think they only get about 4% of the, of the uh, federal funding for cancer research in general. So um, the kids are our future. So we're trying to get some more awareness for that, but he's doing awesome. Thank you very much for asking. Yeah. I'm curious. Like, what's your advice to parents who maybe, Somehow are coming across this interview right now, and they're in the same spot, and obviously they're feeling a ton of fear and just trying to handle the whole thing. What would you say? Yeah, no, fear is a uh, very normal emotion to have to be to be scared and to be sad or to be angry about the situation. I think I felt all those things, and um, you know, just to uh, you know, to be okay with having those emotions, but to be there and be strong for your kid and. And, you know, we really tried to keep everything as normal as possible as far as, um, you know, you know he, he, he became, he started to have his, he had these, all these robots he had to get attached to all the time when he was having his infusions. And, um, but they became his robot friends and MRI, our MRI machines became his, his big robot friends. So um, to keep things as light as possible, um, as it, it, difficult to, as that is, um, you know, the kids, uh, tend to, you know, react, um, seems from my perspective, at least with our son, uh, react well and, and, um, deal with things a little bit better when you're keeping things a little bit more on the lighter side, but it's tough when you're going through that stuff and you see your kids in pain and, um, you know, you know, having nausea issues or, um, you know, whatever side effects come from the, uh, the treatment and the, the chemo drugs. So, um, just, I guess, have trust in, in the doctors that they know exactly what they're doing. You know, we're very lucky to have specialists down here with the, with the type of cancer that he has. Very, very, very rare form of cancer. Only about 600 kids a year get diagnosed. So, um, a lot, a lot of pediatricians will never see it. Um, but when you, when you finally get in it and, and you have the doctors there, they're doing everything possible to make things uh, as comfortable for the kid as possible and to get them as healthy as, as quickly as possible. So uh, have that trust in the doctors. They know exactly what they're doing and just be there um, you know, for your kid. It's, it's hard on parents to have to deal with it. Um, but the way we look at it is like, hey, <clears throat> Um, it, it's it's got to be even tougher on the kids, so uh, we can be strong for him and be there to support him, and um, you know, I think that's a, a good mentality for most parents out there to take. Yeah, appreciate you sharing. Uh, hey, you're working with with Crown Royal today, which is uh, the Crown Royal oh, yeah. Water Break, uh, which uh, most people don't equate those two here, Owen. Uh, but it's, it's <laughs> you know, we're reminding football fans that, you know, oh, yeah. drink responsibly, but throw that water in there too to, you know, keep yourself hydrated, which is super important. So tell, tell me why you're, why this was something that you wanted to be involved with. Definitely. I, you know, I was, uh, but fortunately, this is my second year in a row being involved with this stuff. And, you know, from my experience playing, playing football, obviously, as, as players, it's really important to stay hydrated um, while we're playing. And for fans, it's equally as important. You know, you want to be able to enjoy the entire game day experience from the from the pregame tailgate, during the game, the postgame tailgate. That's a lot of time. That's probably about six hours out there where you could be enjoying yourself. And, and to add some water breaks in there is just going to make things more enjoyable for yourself and all the fans around you. So um, that's what Crown's promoting this year. And um, I'll actually be uh, at Energy Stadium this Sunday here in Houston, Texas, uh, at the Crown Royal Hydration, Hydration Station uh, at the Boulevard Fan Fest, you know, interacting with fans and handing out waters and um, it's still a little toasty down here in Houston, still really humid, about 90 degrees and humid. So um, that's even more important down here when you deal with the heat to stay hydrated while you're enjoying yourself in your crowd of beverages. That, that's that's a beautiful plan. Let, let, let's talk about those Texans. I'm assuming that you, of course, love playing with Matt Shaw, but 
It wouldn't have been too bad to be on the field with this Deshaun Watson character, right? 